Many spaces to show. Okay, what do you think of the news? I think it's fantastic. Great success in space when the Russians pushed a man across the threshold. I think it's very wonderful, but I think it's going to make the, the people very nervous of what's going to happen next. In 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human to reach the vast expanse of the cosmos, where only a chosen few have ventured. Outer space. In the last 60 years after Yuri's successful mission, the number of people who have been to space is still under 700. The final frontier remains an exclusive domain, its gates unlocked only for those who prove to be part of the most formidable minds. And among these few stood Lisa Nowak. Hi, I'm Lisa Nowak, I'm MS2, and I'll be doing a lot of the robotics on the flight, and it is really great to finally be here in Florida for the launch. Thanks for being here to see us. The aeronautical engineer and Navy pilot was specialized in robotics, which alongside intense training, earned her a spot on a mission aboard the Discovery in 2006. Lisa's career was very well established, and the contributions to the team she was a part of could take space investigation and research to a whole new level. But among her triumphs around the stars lurked the shadows of earthly desires, and her name would soon become known, not only for her cosmic conquests, but also for the tricky storms of human emotion. In 2007, fueled by jealousy and a desire for revenge, Lisa assaulted Air Force Captain Colleen Shipman, the woman who had ended Lisa's affair with a fellow astronaut. What began as an affair among colleagues ended up with Lisa packing latex gloves, a wig, and a gun, and attempting to kidnap Colleen at the Orlando International Airport. In the blink of an eye, Lisa, who was quite literally on top of the world, plummeted from the stars and down into the criminal justice system facing charges and losing everything she had worked so hard for. This is the story of Lisa Nowak, the astronaut who turned into a criminal. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Lisa's eyes were always pointed up to the stars. She was born on May 10th of 1963, and spent her childhood in Rockville, Maryland. Lisa was the oldest of three sisters. Her father, Alfredo, was a computer consultant, and Jane, her mother, worked as a biological specialist. Lisa had as normal of a childhood as anyone could possibly ask for. She attended school, was a Girl Scout, excelled in French, became student president of her class, and competed on the math team. And even with all of her involvement in academics, Lisa still had time for sports as well, playing field hockey and competing in track and field athletics. In fact, in 1981, she was even named Student Athlete of the Year. All her efforts in school were not a coincidence. Lisa was working hard for a very clear goal, a goal she'd had since she was a little girl. Because when she was only six years old, Lisa witnessed something incredible. Like many others on July 20th of 1969, Lisa was glued to her television watching the Apollo 11 land on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. After that, she was hooked. Encouraged by her parents, Lisa became very interested in anything and everything space-related especially when the space program began including women in its missions in 1978. So by the time she got into high school, Lisa had no doubts. She wanted to become an astronaut. Lisa's efforts paid off, and in her final year of high school, she had to pick between Brown University and the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. To pursue her dream of becoming an astronaut, she chose the Naval Academy, believing it would enhance her chances of working at NASA. Despite being one of the few women in her classes and facing numerous challenges because of it, she excelled in academics, graduating in 1985 with a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering and joining the United States Navy. Her career began with a six-month assignment as an aerospace engineer at the Johnson Space Center, 
where she participated in six space shuttle launches. In December of 1985, she started flight training in Pensacola, Florida, and despite restrictions on women in combat roles, she completed her training and became a naval flight officer in June of 1987. In 1988, she married Richard Nowak, a former classmate, and became Lisa Nowak. She served in Electronic Warfare Aggressor Squadron 34 in California, quickly qualifying as a mission commander and Electronic Warfare lead. In 1990, Lisa enrolled in the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School, earning two master's degrees by 92, while also giving birth to her first child. She was then accepted into the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School and graduated in 1994. Throughout her Navy career, Lisa logged over 1,500 flight hours in more than 30 aircrafts and received several awards. Lisa's career was definitely on the right path. However, her dream was still not complete because she wanted to work for NASA. But it wasn't that simple. As a naval officer, Lisa couldn't just apply when NASA announced the selection of new astronauts. Instead, she had to submit her application to a review board that would then approve it and forward it on to NASA. From over 2,400 applications, she was one of the 150 finalists invited over for a week of orientation, interviews, and medical evaluations at Johnson Space Center in early 1996. On May 1st of 1996, NASA announced 35 new astronaut candidates, including Lisa as a mission specialist. Lisa had just become part of the 16th group of NASA astronauts. Her dream was about to become true. Lisa and her family relocated to Clear Lake City, Texas, and for months she trained for extreme conditions in the weightless environment training facility and the commonly known as Vomit Comet, a reduced gravity aircraft meant to simulate gravity zero conditions that takes some getting used to. NASA's reduced gravity plane flies a path that looks like a big roller coaster, without the track. Over the top, you follow a parabola, and you float for about 25 seconds. Then the pilot pulls up, and you get about twice as heavy at the bottom. You do that over and over. Boy, that makes some people very, very sick. This plane's got a nickname. They call it the Vomit Comet. And believe me, it's earned its reputation. Excuse me. In early 2001, while she specialized in operating the space shuttle's robotic arm, she became pregnant and gave birth to twin daughters in October. Soon after, her husband was recalled to active duty, which left Lisa to care for the three children while still working on becoming an astronaut. But no challenge was hard enough. At this point, she had been confirmed as part of the crew for STS-118, However, in 2003, the tragic end of the Columbia Space Shuttle put a hold on her mission. This morning, just before 8 o'clock Texas time, the Space Shuttle Columbia was just about to finish a picture-perfect 16-day scientific mission. The astronauts' families were by the runway in Florida, poised for a great reunion. Instead, this was the picture that we all saw. Columbia was at 200,000 feet, going 12,500 miles an hour when it suddenly broke up under stress that we still do not understand. Some engineers wonder if the trouble really began at liftoff, when some insulation came off the shuttle's big orange fuel tank and apparently struck the orbiter's wing. These men and women assumed great risk in the service to all humanity. New safety procedures needed to be set into place to avoid another incident like the one that killed seven astronauts, some of which had been Lisa's classmates. In January 2004, Lisa began training as part of the STS-121 crew, a mission that would test some of these new safety measures. Her training took her to Canada to endure cold weather survival scenarios, and during her time there, Lisa started an affair. William Ophelain, a fellow pilot and astronaut, had known Lisa for a while. Both of them were married and had children, but had decided to start a secret affair that could get them into a lot of trouble. As serving Navy officers, they could face charges under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. But their secret would be discovered first by William's wife, who found compromising emails Lisa and William had exchanged and filed for divorce in February of 2005. Although William was no longer married, Lisa still was. And while she was continuing her training, the affair also continued. Hi, 
I'm Lisa Nowak. I'm MS2, and I'll be doing a lot of the robotics on the flight. And it is really great to finally be here in Florida for the launch. Thanks for being here to see us. Hi. On July 4th of 2006, the day had finally come. Lisa was going to space. Her lifelong dream was coming true. Astronauts are allowed to take certain personal effects with them, and Lisa chose to pack a series of symbols from the different schools she attended, as well as her grandmother's engagement ring. Two, one, booster ignition, and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. Lindsay joined on the flight deck by pilot Mark Kelly, flight engineer Lisa Nowak, and mission specialist Mike Fossum, mission specialists Pierce Sellers, Stephanie Wilson, and Tom. During the mission, Lisa was in charge of operating the robotic arm for repairs and research purposes. However, she wasn't able to exit the shuttle since, at the time, NASA didn't provide spacesuits in smaller sizes. Therefore, women usually were not even considered for spacewalks. The mission was a success, and the team was able to collect samples and conduct experiments, as well as safely re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Lisa's mission in space was a statement to all women and girls who, like herself, had dreamed of becoming an astronaut. She went on to give speeches and press conferences about her career and her achievements, being presented as a role model for future generations. But while Lisa's professional life thrived, her personal life was crumbling. The affair between Lisa and William was still going on even after William began seeing U.S. Air Force Captain Colleen Shipman. But things would soon fall apart for Lisa. William ended their affair to stay with Colleen, and the Noak marriage ended soon after in 2007. Although she and William had parted with the idea of becoming friends, Lisa was finding it hard to keep her distance. William and Colleen were in a serious relationship now, and Lisa was drastically removed from the picture. But her feelings for William hadn't changed, and she longed to be with him. To make things worse, in January of 2007, NASA announced a series of changes in mission specialists, and Lisa did not get the assignment she hoped for. In fact, her abilities as a team player were being questioned. Despite having achieved everything she dreamed of, Lisa was struggling. For the first time in her career, her hard work was no longer paying off. And so her strong feelings for William and the jealousy she felt from his and Colleen's relationship drove her to make a terrible decision. Using the key to his apartment William had given her, Lisa broke in to snoop around. She knew Colleen would be traveling from Houston to Orlando, so she looked on William's computer to find out exactly what flight she was going to be on. Lisa wanted to confront Colleen and fight for what she believed was the real relationship William should be in. So with that information in hand, on February 3rd of 2007, Lisa Nowak took a rather long road trip. That day, she packed her bags into her soon-to-be ex-husband's car and drove from Houston all the way to Orlando, Florida. Inside her bags were a pair of latex gloves, a black wig, pepper spray, a trench coat, black gloves, a hammer and a folding knife, as well as a BB gun, and plenty of ammunition. Lisa drove the 900 miles without barely stopping. In fact, there was a rumor that she had worn adult diapers to make sure she didn't have to stop for bathroom breaks, a rumor that was later denied by her and her attorneys. Regardless, Lisa was fast and managed to get to the Orlando airport with plenty of time to get ready to meet Colleen. On February 5th of 2007, just after midnight, security footage shows Lisa Nowak walking through the terminal, dressed up in a hooded trench coat, round-rimmed red glasses, rolled up blue jeans, black sneakers, and a black wig. She had never met Colleen in person, but knew exactly what she looked like from pictures. Colleen landed in Orlando shortly after 1 a.m., but when she went to collect her bags, she discovered they had been misplaced and were traveling in the next flight, which would arrive in a couple of hours. This meant she had to wait around the airport in the middle of the night until the next flight got there.
Finally, around 3 a.m., her bags arrived, and Colleen made her way towards the parking lot. There were very few people around the airport at this time, so it's not hard to spot on surveillance footage how Colleen was being followed by a mysterious figure in a trench coat. Lisa, in her disguise, was not being discreet, and all the way from the terminal to the shuttle bus that took her to the parking lot, Colleen noticed just how suspicious this mystery figure was behaving and how odd their outfit was. When she reached her stop, Colleen got off, but so did Lisa, who quickly started running towards Colleen. By this time, she was already in her car, so Lisa tried to open the car door and slapped at the window aggressively. She told Colleen she needed help, since her boyfriend was supposed to pick her up but hadn't shown up, and needed a ride. Colleen told her she wouldn't give her a ride, nor lend her her phone, she just wanted to get out of there. From outside the car, Lisa continued talking, and at one point started crying, so Colleen rolled down her window two inches to try and hear her better, but as soon as she did, Lisa put her pepper spray through the crack and started spraying Colleen. Shocked and affected by the pepper spray, Colleen started the car and quickly drove away, making her way straight to the police. It didn't take long for officers to find Lisa in the parking lot, trying to throw away a bag containing a loaded BB gun and the wig. She was carrying another bag, containing the hammer, knife, latex gloves and pepper spray. When asked what she planned to do with the weapons, Lisa said she had not intended to hurt Colleen, but wanted only to scare her into talking. If Colleen had refused, she'd planned to use the BB gun to force her. As the sun began to rise over Orlando, Lisa was charged with attempted murder, attempted kidnapping, attempted burglary, battery, and destruction of evidence. Police had no doubt this was premeditated, referencing to the detailed planning, the fact she wore a disguise, and how she watched and followed the victim for hours. But at that point, the police hadn't identified Lisa for who she was. Respected and famous astronaut, Lisa Nowak, It was the first time in history that an astronaut was arrested and charged with felonies such as the ones Lisa was facing, and the media went crazy for the story. When she was released on a $25,000 bail and wearing a security ankle bracelet, she had to be escorted with her head covered to a hotel so that the media could not take pictures of her. The next day, she was flown to her Houston home, where she was to await trial. As her case moved to trial, Lisa's legal counsel opted to file for an insanity plea, claiming she suffered from obsessive-compulsive disorder, insomnia, and depression. There were also claims that she had not been properly advised of her rights, and therefore her police interview following her arrest was inadmissible in court. In the end, Lisa entered into an agreement where she pled guilty to burglary and misdemeanor battery. The judge, taking her status as a first-time offender into account, gave her a year of probation, community service, and directed her to write Colleen Shipman a letter of apology. I'm glad to have this opportunity to apologize to Miss Shipman in person. Why don't you turn and face Miss Shipman when you do this? I'm glad to have the opportunity to apologize to you, Miss Shipman, in person. I am sincerely sorry for causing fear and misunderstanding and all of the intense public exposure that you have suffered. I hope very much that we can all move forward from this um, with privacy and peace. Colleen was not happy with his sentence. She told the court Lisa had every intention to kill her. Not only had she shown signs of violence and had the tools to commit murder, but she had also been stalking Colleen for months before the attack. An attack which left Colleen dealing with PTSD that materialized in nightmares and dizzy spells and a constant feeling that she needed to protect herself. Lisa Nowak hunted me down and attacked me in a dark parking lot. Her attack was part of a well-researched, -re well-planned and deliberate crime. Now, almost three years later, I'm still reeling from her vicious attack and I'm still trying to put my life back together. I knew in my heart when Lisa Nowak attacked me, that she was going to kill me. It was in her eyes. It's my understanding that Lisa Nowak had researched 
murder, corpse dismemberment, and as well as disguises and trace evidence. And I'm 100% certain that Lisa Nowak came here to murder me, and I believe that she never thought she'd get caught. The trauma of Lisa Nowak's attack has caused me to suffer from medical ailments that I am otherwise too young and too healthy for, like high blood pressure, dizzy spells, chest pains. Your Honor, in deciding on Lisa Nowak's sentence, I implore you to give special consideration to the deliberate and precise nature of her crime, to her failure to abide by her bond conditions, and especially the immense damage that her crimes have caused. Thank you. Between March and May of 2007, NASA dismissed both Lisa Nowak and William Offaline, becoming the first astronauts to ever be terminated by the space agency and making way for the creation of a written code of conduct for all NASA astronauts to follow. During the case, there was also talk about whether Elisa's actions had been triggered by psychological effects from her space mission. Although this was never proven, NASA also increased the psychological tests performed on astronauts before and after missions. Colleen and William remained together and eventually got married, relocating to Alaska, where they built a new life together and started a family. Lisa Nowak finalized a divorce in 2008 and gained full custody of her children, but in 2011, she was also discharged from the Navy. NASA astronaut Lisa Nowak has officially retired from the Navy, receiving an other than honorable discharge. Nowak was convicted of attacking Colleen Shipman in the parking lot. Not much is known about the former astronaut after that, as Lisa has opted to lead a quiet life in Texas, outside the public eye. A woman who became a role model for her talent, determination and strength, also became a criminal for her jealousy and desire for revenge. Although many remember her magnificent career, most people remember Lisa Nowak for the incident that put an end to a life of traveling among the stars. Thank you for watching this video. Here are a few suggestions of other videos you might find interesting. If you want to discuss the case, please leave a comment, but remember to do it in a respectful manner for everyone involved.